Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevin Davani, the Total Connector. Really excited and for, looking forward to having my talk with Alex Waltz. Um, he is known under his pseudonym name, uh, Trooper Alex. Um, Raw Avocado uh, is his Twitter handle, Raw underscore Avocado. That's his Twitter handle. So make sure you follow him. And so we're going to talk about, yeah, we're going to talk about KYC, non-KYC, fuck KYC. Uh, and as you know, you know, if you go on exchange, uh, Bitcoin exchange, preferably Bitcoin only, uh, you must, you know, submit all your data, your name, your address, your passport, your your utility uh, uh, bills, whatever. So, so, you know, so they actually know everything. And if this data ever leaked out to, you know, uh, uh, criminals, they could, uh, you know, people could be uh, robbed and, and beaten and, and with a $5 ranch attack or what have you. So I think it's totally irresponsible, totally unethical and totally criminal what, what's being done with this KYC procedure. And, you know, that's the dilemma we're going to talk about because um, where else can you go? You know, you can go to an ATM, Bitcoin ATM somewhere, pay at least 3 to 3.5%, at least in Austria, you know, transaction fees or much more. And now I understand, you know, if they don't have much, you know, uh, uh, leeway or other ways, you know, to, to, uh, reduce those transaction fees, you know, it's all regulatory burden and this and that, and it's a lot of responsibility and liability. Anyway, so I'm, uh, without further ado, this is my talk with Alex Waltz. Let me know your questions and, uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, especially Twitter, uh, subscribe on YouTube, on my, my podcast platforms. Thanks so much for your support and for listening. This is my talk with Alex Waltz. Welcome to the show, Alex. Great to have you here. <laughs> How are you, man? Hey, what's happening, dude? Yeah. Th thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. I, I saw that post there and I felt that, um, you know what? I think very little people ever experienced uh, that we have no clue what they are. And I think they really misunderstood. So uh, I really said, you know what? I'll, let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. Listen, Alex, yeah, I mean, I've been following you for quite some, you're pretty active. I mean, you, you, uh, you want to tell my listeners like a little bit your background, your, how, how did you find Bitcoin? What's your vision, mission, ethos? Sure, of course. Well, I got, um, I, I'm a Bitcoiner. Um, I've got into Bitcoin in 2012. I was studying computer science and um, well, I didn't really like it anymore there because it seemed like the best option for me was to get a job at Google. And I, I really thought that's like, that's really not interesting. So I, I was going to quit computer science anyway. And Bitcoin comes along and I was like, okay, this is a perfect opportunity. So pretty much every, ever since then, every waking second of my life was about Bitcoin. And um, yeah, I've worked on a lot. I started a lot of projects. Most of them didn't make any money. Most of them failed. But um, uh, a few actually ended up doing quite well. So, so yeah. Um, and you play guitar. I guess that's how I got into it. <laughs> Yeah, I played guitar for, for 11 years. I'm a big guitar nut. I had like probably 50 guitars over my lifetime and I trade them sometimes. So yeah, I'm, I'm really big on guitars. Awesome. <laughs> well, look, uh, Alex, I want to talk to you about, because um, 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 I did, um, I put up uh, some kind of, of tweet and uh, it, it triggered some people because, you know, they said, oh, you know, it's a free market. I was just trying to make a point. Uh, it was uh, it was about, uh, you know, the the, the transaction fees that are charged on ATMs, on Bitcoin ATMs. And the, the point I was trying is to make is that, you know, if I had the choice, like if, if it was, um, if it was competitively, you know, affordable, uh, to go to an ATM, I would probably, you know, not go on an exchange on a KYC exchange. I mean, that's the you know main, main topic right today, um, doing KYC and all that shit. But then go to ATMs and in you know in regular intervals like buy a little bit of Bitcoin, but without all the hassle and the KYC and with let's say you know with reasonable transaction fees. And in Austria, for example, where I live, they charge approximately three to three point five percent. It might be reasonable because maybe you know because of regulatory whatever burden they have, they can't really you know ha you know offer competitive transaction fees. Uh, um, uh, you know, compared to the exchanges. But what's your position on that? Well, I guess I should have also clarified why, why am I even talking here? Well, I've been, I've been trading on local Bitcoins uh, pretty much over since the first day I got hooked. I'd be called somewhat 
uh, of an ex we're close to an expert on peer-to-peer -peer markets i like to say i am because i traded everything you could imagine on those things pretty much anything right and i've also had atms at some point um uh i've I had um we had some in birmingham but we stopped them straight away so again i, I think i really know how these things operate and, and what's the deal with them um but let's get back to your question right what's my think on that um First of all, yeah, I, I'm a big believer in, in, in free markets. And I think the first ever free market humanity ever had was the Bitcoin fee market, right? Because um, there are pretty much no constraints there. You just broadcast, you attach a fee. And if someone wants to take your transaction, um, they take it, right? So, so and, and I really am a, I'm a huge believer in the fact that markets are, um, I also think markets tend to be efficient. So they're really good at, good at pricing things in, right? And so if, if, if there's a lot of ATMs in a country, and the, and the fee is 20%, and then I tend to believe there's a good reason for that. And let me explain what's the biggest reason, okay? So let's say you wanna set up an ATM right now, right? Well, first of all, that means you're, you're, you're starting a business. And as far as I would understand what a business does, a business asks one very single important question at the beginning of each day. Did we make money today? No. Okay, how do we make money tomorrow? Did we make money today? Yes. Okay, how do we make more money then? If, if you're not answering these questions, then you're not a business, you're, you're something else. Doesn't mean you shouldn't exist. That doesn't mean that everyone should ask these questions, but that's why you're starting a business is to generate profit, economic activity. And much so that's very much aligned with um, Bitcoin because that's where the feedback loop starts in this whole incentive aligning machine. It starts with greed and ends with greed. So I, I really don't like when people think that's something bad, you know, trying to make money because it's, it's just very idiotic. That's what this whole thing is built on. That's why we're all here, right? So now you're starting an ATM business and you want to make more money. You want to generate as much you want to add value and generate as much as you can. So what a, pretty much what an ATM is, is this, there's a point somewhere in a fixed space where you give it fiat and it gives you Bitcoin or vice versa, right? Now, because of this, you're going to have certain risks. Uh, the most obvious one is the fact that, well, someone can steal your ATM, right? And, you put, and, you, and then you invest money in that machine. And some of them are cheap, but some of them are not. Then you have to pay rent. So, and then the biggest problem and the biggest cost is that People are putting money in and out in this ATM, right? And now they, you have to take it out. You have to go and take it out of there and you have to like, you know, um, uh, put, put Bitcoin back in, right? By the way, feel free to stop me if I'm not making sense where I talk fast because I tend to do that a lot. Um, great. So you're at a point right now where you need to take that money out, okay? And you need to buy your Bitcoins from somewhere. So most probably you're going to have to try to put it in a bank or something like that. And in most of the Western countries, that, that's next to impossible. Like, it's really next to impossible. So now, you're, if it, and there's a way to do this only with cash. Well, now here's the thing. You want to move that money around. So you want to move it safe. Probably at the beginning, you're going to do it with your bodies. And you're going to, it's probably a few hundred quid, right? There's no big deal. You can go and take it out. But as soon as your, your business grows, you need to move that money around. And for example, in London, where I am, uh, the, the companies that offer this type of service, they charge a lot of money and they only want to move a thousand pounds at once to charge you more. So now I, I don't, me as a guy who's a business owner, when I hear someone saying, dude, you're charging too much. I mean, that really pisses me off because, mm -hmm. Hey dude, you don't know what the hell I'm going through and never mind the regulation, right? Never mind the fact that you have to pay lawyers, never mind all those things. So that's why I, I think I also responded a bit acid and I'm sorry about that. Um, I was a bit ag aggressive on that. So, so there's, there's all these things there. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so we have the, uh, uh, Bitcoin ATMs. All right. That's, that's definitely, you know, always a good alternative, but the thing is, um, if you want to like do this, you know, from home, uh, as convenient as possible, you know, you want to stay home and do this via, uh, a so-called decentralized, um, peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Now, there are not so many options. There's HODL, HODL, and BISC. I just, for the sake of, you know, learning, I, I went into that, you know, set up the account, everything went smooth. And then when I wanted to log in again, it didn't work. I'm not criticizing BISC. Maybe, I don't know, maybe something didn't work out. Or, uh, you know, I'll criticize them. I'll criticize both of them. I don't have a problem criticizing Go ahead. them. Uh, well, just constructive criticism. How could we, you know, because my main concern is that how can we make it you know, as smooth and frictionless as possible for the average user out there, you know, uh, whether, you know, you do it in a online or, or in person, face to face or whatever, like how, how would you, how would you go about that? How would you, what would you improve? 
Well, I mean, we could talk a month about it. But first of all, let's get into it a bit, because I don't think a lot of people have enough context on what actually is happening here. You know, I found it really funny that your tweet was, um, I would like to interview a trader that's on the KYC exchanges, and no one replies. Well, let me tell you why, because no one is fucking using those things, right? And I don't want to take a step, by the way, I don't want to take a step at the people who are working at these things because, well, first of all, they're putting tools out there for free, right? And, and that's a huge opportunity cost. I mean, they could have been earning money with those skills. So I totally get it. But listen, a bad product is a bad product, no matter how many commits you have on GitHub. And it doesn't matter if you tweet cypherpunk ideals, if your product is bad and the market shows your product is bad. Now, again, I'm not, I don't have anything personal with these guys, but come uh, let me, on, man. Let, okay, let me, let me ask you one, one short question. Do you think Go the on. target audience of HODL, HODL, and BISC is not really the average user, but a little bit more experienced, not a geek, not a nerd, but, you know, someone who's really skilled and experienced with... Uh, you know what the problem is with this type of targeting, those type of audiences? Because, like, everyone, there's some businesses who try to target Bitcoiners. Dude, you can't sell Bitcoin to Bitcoiners. They already bought their Bitcoins, right? And, and in, in the... In the, in the in the hope of they're gonna sell their bitcoins at some point, which most of them don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell mine, right? They're not, so, so that's just a bad targeting for them. It's just a bad business model, man. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. It's just bad, there's nothing there. The market shows that, right? And then there's also the fact that, you know, when you're trying to, the way I saw any big business that ever was successful, right? It was they saw a problem and they try to solve a problem. Let's see what technologies we can use. These these, these uh, exchanges, they have this technology and now they're just forcing people to use it, which is just absurd if you ask me. And look, here's the thing right now. I'm a market maker, right? I make money. I want to provide liquidity on those things. I mean, by the way, I mean, I'm a, I'm a computer dude. I run my nodes. I do everything very privately. I run Tor. I do all those things. So like, dude, I'm the target audience. Like I'm your guy there. Now, if I'm criticizing you and I'm saying this, how do you think other people who, have, who, who don't even know what, how the computer works are going to be able to use these exchanges? So I don't think, I think they just started off really wrong with some really bad presumptions. And the most important thing for them was to sound good on Twitter. And they're doing that. That's fine. But they don't sound good to their customers because there's no one using it. Yeah, you're right. You see, I mean, I, I see myself as a non-technical guy and uh, as an educator. So, uh, you know, the reason I, you know, I converted my Casa 2 into my Node, you know, with premium version, I, I set up all everything. It took me at least weeks, you know, till, till I got it all, you know, all up and running. But, you know, if I, if, if, I mean, if, if it takes me like weeks, you know, to, to figure out all these little details that you cannot find, you know, I mean, I really appreciate all those videos that, Whoever does them, you know, BTC session, Ketan, uh, Ministry of Nodes. Um, sorry if I missed any, uh, but really shout out to them. It just, it's just so many individual specific cases, you know, so many individual problems that arise. You can't deal with those. You have, you need some kind of, of you know, uh, I mean, really people don't need to be taken by their hands, but at least some kind of, you know, uh, personal support or something because you know there's just so many technical details that it's you can't foresee those problems you know with it be port forwarding or vpn or whatever some kind of adjustment settings it's crazy so um i think as long as we we collectively individually and collectively within the bitcoin community cannot empathize with the real needs and desires of the average use out there whatever age, whatever social group or whatever, educational background, then we, ca we can't make it, all right? We got to serve the other people first and then we're served. This is, this is how, you know, I guess the essence of love works. We need to really um, be as empathetic as possible, you know, on an intellectual level, technical level, educational level, communication level. So let's take back a few steps, KYC. Uh, the reason I'm, you know, I'm so, uh, you know, I'm so pissed off at this KYC is that what if something happens, you know, I mean, who is liable? What if some people get robbed, you know, because KYC means you're giving everything, your name, your, your address, I mean, everything. If, I mean, if this information, you know, get leaked out, this data get leaked out, people are fucked. I mean, you're you know, this right. is totally irresponsible. Of course, it's a minimum legal requirement. I get the regulatory, but then, I mean, these regulatory things, uh, you know, uh, 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 they, they come from a, 
you know, from an entity that is uh, that that works with with the threat, at least with the threat of coercion, aggression, and violence. And this is, you know, the nation state, the government, and and on top of that, the central banks. But uh, we need to detach ourselves from this reality. And and the only way to do this is to have more user friendly applications, platforms, um, you know, support groups, or what have you. Look, man, I totally feel your pain. You know what? I am. Um... I, I, I just, I also don't like this whole thing and we're jumping KYC straight away. I don't like this whole thing that, you know what? I mean, it took me, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty technical guy. I really am, right? And it took me five years to understand those things. How do you expect, seriously, someone who doesn't understand how computers work to, to do that in a month, right? And here's the problem because everyone feels that the more hardcore you are, the cooler it is. Dude, I don't see anything fucking cool about like, you know, it's like, what, are, you, are you fucking sadomasochist or something? Why do you want to make your life hard? Why do you want to make other people's lives hard, right? So I totally feel your pain. And most of these people who say they want to help new users, they never met a new user in their life. They talk with their mother and their grandma. They installed green or something on their phone. It's like, oh, I, I converted new users. Dude, they're your family. They're going to say yes to everything you do. All right. I mean, I probably, I probably gave their first Bitcoin to more than 10,000 people. And I was sitting next to them, by the way, over these years. And I can tell you not a single one of them cares about any of these dumb things that people say. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing. If you get a new computer, if your computer comes with a book this big, you're not going to fucking use it, dude. All right? Stop building products that comes with education. Not everyone wants to be educated. I don't want to fucking be educated at the end of the day. I'm tired of being educated, man. I want to do things. I want to get Bitcoin. I want to get a Lambo. I want to buy guitars. After crack on, I don't have time with all this shit. Imagine, and again, this is what I do every single day. Imagine how normal people feel. So I totally, totally feel you. And I think we, we're in a point where we have such weak culture right now in Bitcoin that that, that is supposed to be like everyone just everyone is trying to show everyone how cypherpunk they are how much they know and how intellectual they are dude the whole point is to get bitcoin it's not to be smart all right i mean if you want to be smart it's very simple dude shut the fuck up and only talk and copy smart people but i, I don't think that's interesting i think the, the whole point is to, to, to not be intellectual and try to find out things that's how it worked out for me so you know um rant over <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's good. It's, the rant is good because it needs to be articulated, these things, uh, you know, whatever, you know, uh, reaction we're going to get from this. But uh, the, this is the question I'm, I mean, I've been asking this in other interviews, like what, what, what can we do structurally? I mean, structurally in a sense, like how can we work better, better together? You know, whether it be technologies, product developers, UX, UI designers, which I think they're really important in this. Um, I mean, how can we like, you know, connect? <laughs> it's, it's very simple. It's very simple. It's, and, and, and it's, it's a very, you know, Bitcoin is one of the very few things in life that um, every action you think has a very deep philosophical implications, right? That's why we actually intellectualize so much all these things. And the most profound thing you can do is be greedy, want profit. Because if you want profit, you're, you're first of all, you're aligning yourself with the incentives of all the other participants here, right? And if you want to make money, okay, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do something. You're going to put it out there in the market. It's going to get priced, all right? So, so, so that's the whole thing. The problem is that everyone is trying to make it like this is not about money. That's the, that's, that's the solution here. It's like, dude, what do you mean this is not about money? And I don't understand why people are so afraid to say they want to get rich. It's like, dude, what do you mean, man? Of course I want to get rich. I want to eat better food. I want a better house. I want better guitars. What, what's wrong in that? But I'll tell you why that's the case. Because for most of human history, we had a very dishonest form of money. So the only people who could be rich were, it was unfair. It really was uncool to be rich. But we're past that. Stop it. Done. Okay? Stop trying to, 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 to act like, you know, it's not great to, to, to make your life better. That's the problem. And now you have the loudest people on Twitter who say this. And now no one wants the, has the courage to speak this. Because, you know, all the people say like, well, I'm not going to go and say that on Twitter because all the people who have a lot of followers are going to say this about me. Like, what do you care about them, man? What do you even care about that? So, so I think that's, that's pretty much the core of the problem. Is everyone knows how to build good products. We have probably the most smartest minds on the planet that got together here. But no one is actually looking at what this whole thing is about. You know, that's, that's what I think is the problem, if you ask me. And yeah, number go up, you know, that's the technology. I mean, even <clears throat> Hess McCook in, uh, in his last presentation at the Value Bitcoin conference, digital conference, it was, um, 
uh, and he said, you know, he always emphasizes, first of all, he emphasized the auto DCA, you know, people should just auto accumulate. I get that, you know, like, or whatever. I mean, I would combine it with the buy the fucking dip and always, <laughs> always auto accumulate auto DCA. I, I never, I'm never going to get, you know, this, this, this definition of auto DCA because it doesn't make sense to me, but it doesn't matter. It's like regularly, whatever price that it just accumulate and buy the fucking dip and, and the number go up technology, right? That's what, what you're actually also saying in your words, you know, is that people, you know, they don't have the time. They don't have the resource, the patience, the people have responsibilities. They have lives. I think I'm not sure whether, whether we in the Bitcoin space, uh, people get it, you know, that people just have, you know, a life out there. They have, you know, to take care of themselves, of the family, they don't time and my my girlfriend works seven days a week in her in her company in her in her shop and she, she said you know she'd be willing you know to 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 offer alternative payment method you know a full node or whatever but she doesn't have the time and and you know that uh, and uh, it just i don't know it's um we need to get more practical and exactly and you know, and it's realistic, really. I think it's possible. I I, I'm so, so super certain that it's possible. We can literally like exponentially. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think because I, I hear always, oh, we have so much time, you know, it's going to take decades. Oh, we don't have, we don't have decades because exactly. the, the way this centralized criminal system is, is converging, it's, it's, it's going to blow up, you know, everybody's people's minds. And uh, so... I don't think we have much time left, to be honest with you. You know, you know what, uh, dude, when I got into Bitcoin, every single person I would talk with were me. Everyone wanted to make money. Everyone was a hustler. Everyone was practical. Now, everyone is posting pictures of books. It's like, come on, dude, that's not fucking cool, man. I mean, if I'm a guy, all right, and I see this in Bitcoin, I'm like, fuck, I'm not getting into this, right? But what, why would I want to do in the, get into this, right? So, yeah, I totally feel you. Uh, let's talk about the KYC thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I think uh, a lot of people don't understand that KYC is actually like a lightning commitment transaction. What does that mean? Let me explain that. I'm not, I'm not that technical anyway, so I don't want to butcher anything, but um, the whole point in lightning network is that um, when you open a channel, uh, you, you ask the other party to sign this transaction. So pretty much if you misbehave, right. And if you try to steal the coins, I'm going to show this to the network uh, and I'm going to, and the, uh, I show that, that, that you tried to misbehave, right? And I get all the money. And, and you signed this. You literally signed this. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that when we're using IDs issued by the government, they're not using public, uh, private key cryptography. There's just the ID. So that's just like having one key that's public and private. And that's how it is. Like you hold it in your hand, it's private. But if I need to show you who you are, it's, it's also public, right? So the only way I could sign something with this is by showing it to you or giving it to you right now what's the point of this what are you talking about you're crazy this doesn't make any sense well let me tell you why it makes some sense because bitcoin has a probabilistic settlement um probabilistic settlement but as far as we're concerned bitcoin is irreversible i sent you one bitcoin you got a confirmation really really hard to get it back now fiat on the other hand it's not like that it's completely reversible you can reverse it all the time so now I'm giving, let's say you want to buy Bitcoins from me. Now I'm giving you Bitcoin. You're giving me a reversible money. So now I'm going to be like, well, dude, hang on now. I, I, I don't think that's fair. I need to make sure you don't reverse this. Now, how can I do this with a bank? Because the banks, even gift cards uh, issuers like Amazon and most of the people who deal with fiat, they're required by law that if, I, if you go and complain, they're supposed to investigate that, right? So now again, I don't agree with those things. I don't think, I think they're wrong. I think they're outdated. I wouldn't want to do these things. But now, hey, I want to get you Bitcoins and I want to make some money. You're getting your Bitcoins. You get red pill. You can go crazy. You can go on Twitter and I make money. We're, this, is, this is an honest deal here, right? But I don't want to get fucked over afterwards, right? So the only way for me to do this right now is I need to know who I'm dealing with. That's the thing. And now here's the thing. Now, if you try to charge me back, I go to the bank and I was like, nope. This is him. How do you know this is him? Like well, KYC'd him. Uh, and he wrote on this note here and I, I, he took a selfie. So I know this is him 100%. So that's why people KYC. Look, on local Bitcoins, people were KYCing since, since ever. And no one cared about legislation or something. They just realized as market, markets are efficient, 
they realize that they're going to get charged back. So that's why people kill I see. It's not like, it's not like everyone wants to like harm someone or something, you know, that's just the reality. And it's very simple. If someone has a problem with this, I have the best advice for them. Dude, become their competitor. If you have a problem with yeah. somehow someone is doing business, become their competitor. Or, and here's the thing now, go and sell non-KYC Bitcoins and go to jail. That's up to you. No one is stopping you for doing that. So that's why we're never going to get those things. I don't think they're good. Because the reason why I don't like KYC is because it's really important we have fungibility for this to function. And the fact that, that with KYC, you can have this KYC coin, non-KYC coins, that's a big problem. So that's why I ideologically don't want it. But at the end of the day, I'm, um, I have a business, you know? And I, I, I honestly, I give, so many, I give so many people their first Bitcoin. And I think that's more important. I think... I think it, I, I, I would be more happy if everyone got KYC Bitcoin than not get, K, not get Bitcoin, right? Because I didn't got KYC, I got, didn't got non-KYC Bitcoins at the beginning. It was important I got it. And then I got on this path. So that's how I feel about it. Well, let me ask you, I mean, you know what doesn't make sense to me is that, okay, I get it. You know, it's a regulatory minimum if your jurisdiction to jurisdiction different. And, but why isn't there sort of a, like, why don't they set a threshold for a KYC? Like, you know, what if somebody just wants to buy whatever, like $100, 100 euro worth of Bitcoin every month? Why should people be KYC? I mean, it's, the risk is so enormous. The risk is so, if these data get leaked, if criminals get, get the hands on, I mean, you know, the state is self criminal, but, entity, but, but I mean, you know, criminals who, you know, who want to do like $5 wrench attacks or whatever, or, you know, they, they, uh, this is, you are this right. is it's just dangerous. You are so right. But it's, here's the thing though. It is the same thing as, as was mar marijuana was illegal. It's mm -hmm. like, dude, marijuana is illegal. Yeah, dude, but I'm not going to go and sell it in a place where it's not legal. Right. It's the same thing. Then do something and change the laws. Right. I, I look, I'm, I don't want to, I'm sorry. I don't want to be an activist. All right. I want to be a businessman. And I'm not saying like that, uh, people shouldn't be activists. I don't want to be one. And I'll tell you that the activists are not going to be the ones who sell Bitcoin. So it's, it's a very unpleasant real, a truth of reality. You do it like this or you don't do it, right? If there's someone that calls me, sign a paper. So we abolish KYC. Dude, I'm going to sign that, right? I'm all for that. But you can't tell me to, to, to go, okay, you start selling non-KYC Bitcoin. No, dude, you start selling non-KYC Bitcoin, <laughs> you know? It, yeah, I agree with you. It, it, it's, it's not ideal. It's not ideal at all. And look, I mean, uh, we really take privacy seriously. And I've never heard of anyone, actually, not even the big companies to, to do it how we do it. I mean, we, have caught, we always take the debt offline. We have it in some places where, where only I could get to. And, and there are free factors of authentication, like physically you have to go to. So, I mean, look, I really try as hard as I can to make sure that I respect people's privacy. Even more so, I'm required by law. Uh, in the UK by the GDPR. So, so yeah. So you've bought, uh, Alex, so you bought, um, you, you have bought uh, Bitcoin on non-KYC uh, platforms such as BISC. I mean, I've how, never how... bought Bitcoin in my life, by the way. I've always earned my Bitcoin. You that's also it. another thing that, that uh, that's also another thing that people think like, you know what? People think Bitcoin is a lottery ticket. You know, you have your job, which is fine. You have your life. And all that Bitcoin is for most of the people or what is presented is like, dude, Put some money here, wait 20 years when your dick doesn't even get up anymore. And maybe you're going to retire a, a bit early. It's like, well, I don't think that's the most interesting thing. I think it's more interesting trying to earn it and try to do things with it and provide services. So, yeah, I've never bought Bitcoin in my life because I was a student and I was broke. I was living with 10 pounds a week. I couldn't, I couldn't buy Bitcoin. I hustled so much until I got my first Bitcoin. You wouldn't imagine how crazy it was. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You do exactly what Andreas Antonopoulos has been preaching, like, you know, earn your Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> that's right. So um, let me ask you uh, something about HODL HODL because they, they, they announced something, uh, uh, an integration of the blue wallet into HODL HODL. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, recently I got really, really busy. Uh, I, I didn't follow that much what's happening because we, I'm trying to restart our business in a new way. So I'm not familiar with this specifically that you're talking about, if this is really recent. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, what, would you, what would you, I mean, is there anything else you would improve in the Bitcoin space? Yeah, I mean, I'm a really big believer in peer-to-peer -peer markets, first of all, because well, this is what I've did all the time. And it's not by chance, it's because I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, 
when you like exchanges that have an order book, they make a lot of sense because there's a lot of liquidity there and there's certain people who get certain value from that. But that's a very um, narrow way of pricing things in. What do I mean? If you buy, if you go and you put an order on exchange, let's say on Coinbase, delete Coinbase, I know, but let's say they're, they're the biggest thing. Let's delete. say you go and you put, sorry, let's say Coinflora. Forget I said her name. I, 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 I shouldn't have said her name. Let's say you, you use Coinflora, right? Then you put an order there. Well, as far as you're concerned, this has two dimensions. It has the currency you, you, you're buying. Uh, well, it has three dimensions. BTC, USD, and the price, right? And that's pretty much it. All the orders are pretty much fungible there. Now, the reason why I like peer-to-peer -peer markets is because it, it, it allows multidimensional pricing, which means you're not pricing things just by the price. It's like uh, a Bitcoin is a thousand pounds. Is you also under, there's like, oh, multiple payment methods. Oh, there's this guy here who's a nice guy. So you add more depth to your, um, to your experience. And I think that's really, really great for people who get the, into Bitcoin the first time and especially consumers. Now, what I would want it, what I would change, I think uh, a lot of people try to make things decentralized just for the sake of doing them. And I think that's a, a really big problem. You don't have to have everything decentralized. I, I don't think yeah. you have, to have all the exchanges decentralized. That, that's what I think is a... Well, something just does make sense because, you know, <laughs> um, if, if you want to have an efficient operation, uh, you know, that's why this whole buzzword with blockchain is not really understood by a lot of people, especially corporate people, because they think, I don't know, it, it enhances their <laughs> operations or anything. They don't, they don't understand that blockchain itself is so, it, it's on purpose. That's why it's built for Bitcoin, because it's inefficient, it's slow, it's primitive, right? Exactly. So you say you have a business and you have your own full node. I mean, you are more, you know, I, I consider you a lot, lot, lot more, you know, technically experienced and skilled and knowledgeable. But, you know, my, one of my main, you know, um, a wish for me, you know, is, um, is to get more merchants on board, you know, to have the full node running, but th this, is, this ain't easy. So, um, so that's why I suggest that I even wrote an article about it. I, I wrote BTC pay server. I said, you know, there's a bunch of people now, Sven Schneiders from Austria. Now he's, I think he's, he's, he's just started a website. I think it's called something with, um, Citadel, sorry. 21 uh, Citadel. Uh, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. The, the first article was so cool. I like that one so much. Yeah, exactly. And I thought, I'm like, I'm like, you know, if we can like set up a special task force, uh, of people that can, you know, face to face on a personal level, you know, and maybe even some kind of sort of a hotline where people don't have to go through telegram groups, you know, ask questions, wait, and, you know, it's really complicated. It's really complex, like break things down on a language level, a technical level, and really give the people like merchants the, the feeling that they're being helped support. And I think once they have it up and running, now besides the special question, how they're gonna integrate that into their accounting system, because that's the main concern. If I talk to people, uh, you know, they still have, you know, legal uh, obligations and requirements and, you know, for tax reasons and accounting purposes. And so that's a total different issue. But I'm just saying, you know, if, if they have, you know, then, customers, existing potential customers who can just download an app, whatever wallet that is, and the merchant got it, you know, all connected, fully sovereign, fully connected. That would be like a step, exponential step forward. What is your take on that? Oh, I think you're, you're really right about it. I, I think that's, a, that's the way to go forward. And by the way, I, I keep watching your stuff from time to time. I think you're doing a really great job, you know. And, Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Thanks I, a lot. The, the, the last one I saw, I um, uh, I saw your interview with uh, Ben, by the way, Ben Kaufman. Oh, Ben Kaufman, I'm a huge yeah. fan. Of yeah. yeah, he's a great, well, awesome actually, economist. He's super. He is. Yeah, and he's a cool guy. We all met actually there at the, at the Lightning Conference, if you remember. I think that's where I met you the first time. We In talked Berlin? very briefly. Yeah, we talked very briefly for like ten minutes. Oh my god. Time. Okay, this is such a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So so I think that's the way to go, right? But. You know what I think, what I would, if there's anything I would add to what you said is that it has to be for making money. You have to do it for making yeah. money. Yeah. That's the problem. The thing is like when we run our business here, you know what? I was uh, trading here. I was using bank transfers and I get, ba I'm literally banned from every high street bank in this country. I don't have a bank account, which is crazy, right? <laughs> and when this happened, where there were two options, I either stopped doing this or you find a way. And of course I found a way. I said, we're going to start trading cash right now. 
And um, at the beginning, we were really scared because we thought we we're going to get all kinds of weird people. Turns out, no. Turns out people don't have a problem KYCing. And turns out that people really want to sit down with someone and talk. That was it. That's what we were doing, man. It was very simple. You would call us all the time and sit down and talk with you. Bitcoin <laughs> therapist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good we one. That's a new business, man. Doing business model. <laughs> That, but that's what we did, and we did really well with that. And when we, we, we served a lot of people, right? We got, and especially in 2017, it was crazy. We wouldn't even sleep sometimes. And that's the, that it's very simple, but you need to be profit motivated. Because if you do it out of the goodness of your heart, um, you're just not aligning yourself, you know, with the ideals. And that's what a lot of – I don't understand why people would, are so afraid to say they want to make money, man. That's just so crazy. I, don't, I, I just can't wrap my head around it. I, I don't get it. No, that's the essence of, you know, incentivization and incentive game. And, you know, I've been saying this for a long time. I, mean, I don't think we have much time left, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the inf I mean, now all the prominent economists, Austrian economists are saying that we're going we're gonna to have a real shitstorm of inflation and even hyperinflation. Even Thorsten Polite, you know, says the best case scenario would be 30% inflation. I'm just saying, what if, we, what if we need really urgently the preparation is everything, you know, preparation of the merchant just to have an alternative payment option up and running because as soon as the fiat system comes crashing down like a house of cards and it could happen seriously much sooner than it anticipated, people, you know, the merchants, the businesses, especially small businesses, you know, the ones who, who are, you know, who can create those localized, uh, whatever circular economies, they're ready. They're ready to go. They're ready. You know, they can just transact, trade. You know, just just break these things down to the to the to the essentials. And uh, this is what I'm really concerned about. Like, how how much time do we have left? You know, if people know. are not even prepared for that. I don't know how much we time I have left, but I also, you know, what I realized, and and I had this epiphany quite recently at the beginning of the year. You know, when you're doing security stuff. Right, and when you're a Bitcoiner, you it really makes sense to take out a visceral. It's not paranoia; it makes logical sense. Why? Well, because the threats are um, are asymmetric, so you need to take extra caution. Now, the problem is when you're a Bitcoiner, you hang out with Bitcoiners, you're gonna do only that, and then you're gonna end up seeing life like that. And I was like that, right? I mean, I, I wouldn't even want. I mean, you would probably wouldn't believe the the crazy things I would go through in the tinfoil hat ways, like. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't even want to say. Anyway, but the point is that I think when you zoom out a bit and you look at the world, I think we are actually preparing for the worst case scenario, which is good. But I don't think necessarily is that bad. It's the same as like be living somewhere in California and you have an um, umbrella with you all the time. Sometimes it's going to rain, you're going to get away. It's like, yeah, but you know what? probably rains once a month and even if it does you could get, jump in an uber and so so it's like that. that that's what i think about it but there's and there's another problem with merchants i think the, it, the hyper bitcoinization it's really far away even if bitcoin goes to 100k tomorrow right and people still use i don't think we're gonna still people are gonna use fiat and as such right they are gonna be exposed to this volatility so it's not enough to give them tools just to um process the payment you need to give them tool to hedge because that's how people do things right and i know for a fact with btc pay server um what's the thing called uh, i don't know not the transmuter Joy they have uh -huh. they have this thing where you can like integrate things on top of it you can uh -huh. plug things into it right so oh, you see the, that's the thing the pitch shouldn't be to them to the vendors like you're going to be sovereign they don't give a fuck about being sovereign if they would have been sovereign they didn't want to open a restaurant where they serve spaghetti all right they want to have got guns or something help with a gun shop so what they care about is about they need to make sure they can still make money so you should you should pitch them that while well, you're getting more clients or something and you don't need to worry about anything because you're adding another worry to them mm -hmm. how do i cash this out or what do i do yeah and you know i mean depending of course which country and there are some countries or some locations that more let's say bitcoin inclined or more bitcoin uh, there's more bitcoin adoption just you know, literally so i think there would be more people if, um you know willing to pay in bitcoin you know because i have a bitcoin wallet you know I, if, if somebody like if it's like really like small amounts you know that you can transact with I would literally pay in Bitcoin. Why not? You know, just, just to get it started, just to make it more sort of, you know, trendy. 
Well, you know what? Um, I, 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 I came up with this term, which is Bitcoin graduation. Um, I told you I'm a very unique case in the fact that I've never ever in my life, I've never had any money except Bitcoin, right? So I've always, here's the thing. When people are telling me, huddle, do this. It's like, dude, I'm going to starve if I huddle. I have to spend money, right? So I think there's going to get to the point where more and more people, as they get into Bitcoin and as time progresses, they're going to be in a similar situation to this. So they're going to want to spend, right? The problem, though, is that there's very little people like that right now, you know? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and if you have any, I mean, if I would have any other fiat, I wouldn't want to spend my Bitcoin, you know? Why would I? So, so yeah. And, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I, like, I'll be honest with you. Like, there were so many times, especially in the early days, like, I spent so many Bitcoins just because I wanted to get a started, man. I like this thing. I believe in it. It's fucking cool, right? Like, of course you want it. It's like, I don't care. What if I'm not going to be as rich as I could have been and I'm spending some coins? I'm helping this thing out. I'm a part of it. So I totally get that, you know? It's very ideological, but yeah, it's all right. A lot of people do that. And there's a bigger vision, vision to that. I mean, you know, people like you and me who have been so long in Bitcoin, I mean, we have, you know, we all have, you know, our maybe even individual visions and, and, and projections and, and, and ethos. And, and, and let me ask you, what is... How would you how would you envision how would you envision our society or you know the place you live like you want to call it hyper bitcoin bitcoinization whatever but like once it's really starts rolling once we have this critical mass do you what kind of what would the daily the day-to-day -day life of of people would look like i think this is i'm trying always to communicate like we could have a much much more abundant prosperous life you know like when, when i had like talks interviews with jeff booth you know he's he, he he totally gets it you know he comes from the entrepreneurial macro investor side he knows that society can and civilization can totally transform you know by with deflation and and, and technology and all these structures would transform itself what's what's your what, what do you envision for the future i think i think um well, I think that's actually further away than people think, and we might not even get in our lifetime because change is usually hard, right? And um, while we can look at other technologies in the past, and the internet is the most recent and obvious one, and there's still quite a, some people who are not really on it, right? And this had such a big network effect and blah, 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 but still there are people not using it. So that may be farther than we think, but I do think that's going to happen. I, there's no doubt in my mind that's going to happen. And how would I think that looking like? I think it's some kind of Ancapistan type of a Ancapistan type of a world, right? Where there's like this anarcho-capitalist type of thing, free markets, private everything, you know. And uh, you know, if if you instead of the type of um of a society, like if we want to hang out here and we're a bit more like we like guitars and we're all about making money, then it's cool. We can stay here and we can have guns or whatever people have. But it's okay. The guys could be hippies over there. They could even be communists, right? Like. Guys, do whatever you want. Be socialist. Be communist. And I do think it's going to go towards that. So, yeah, I'm very sympathetic to this whole um, fix the money, fix the problem. But just at a societal level, not at a personal level. That doesn't fix people mm -hmm. individually, you know. Okay. So, yeah. What okay. about you? How do you feel about that then? I think I'm, I'm very convinced. I'm, I have a very concrete vision that, you know, all these things that are, that are being suppressed have been suppressed for such a long time. You know, IDs, creativity, technology, science, uh, it's just all going to come out of the closet. You know, the patent system got to be obsolete. That's for sure, because I think it's a theft system. Such, you know, the same with the central banking system, the governmental system, all these, you know, cryptocratic systems within the, all these structures. They all, once these are obsolete, I mean, we're going to see really prosperous future. And I think this is what people don't understand what Bitcoin really does to the very foundation, to the very fabric of society on, on every level you can think of, you know, even spiritually, you know, even on education, on education, children are going to, you know, grow up totally much more creatively. Entrepreneurs are going to just going to blossom, you know, together with investors, with, you know, like Elon Musk, even though, you know, he has one foot, to be honest with you, in the military sector. That's why he cannot talk about a lot of things of non-disclosure agreements. But these are, you know, a lot of taboo topics, I think, that you cannot talk about. But it doesn't matter, you know. I think that we're going to have millions of, of Elon Musks out there. You know, we're going to have real money, real hard, scarcest money together combined with entrepreneurship, technological innovation, zero to one. I mean, we can't even fathom, we can't even imagine what the what, what future is going to look like. 
I mean, starting with energy, you know, much more beyond our imagination, energy technologies, transportation technologies, medical health technologies. It just, you know, I think we've been so brainwashed, indoctrinated and dumbed down. It's really hard for people to even imagine that this is possible. This is reality already, but because it's all everything, you know, un, uh, suppressed and where do you think the trillions are going to flow into it right now? I mean, it's, it's all into the military industrial corporate sector. And this is just imagine all this money come going out into the, you know, <laughs> into the public, you know? Oh, I, I think that's a very nice way to put it. And, and yeah, uh, there's definitely going to be a lot of interesting things. And I also think people should be a bit more entrepreneurial and it's not like because of Bitcoin, you get a different edge. You still have to like, it's hard to make money, right? Regardless of how good the money is, but it does allow anyone to do it. It really does. I mean, that, not that for me, I'm, I'm exactly the meme of the kid who was in college and just got into Bitcoin with literally nothing. So, so, you know, I'm very sympathetic to that. And, and I, I, I do, well, also what I don't like is because there's this, um, like being a Bitcoin is kind of antithetic to being an entrepreneur, right? Or a businessman or a sales guy. And uh, you, you said zero to one. And in that book, Peter, I, I like that book a lot. I, I read it probably 20 times. In that book, he really talks about how computer geeks see marketing, right? Because as an engineer, you wrote some, a program. You give it some test and it's like, does it work or not? Does it, does it work fast? So it's pretty easy to evaluate things. But when it comes to marketing, it's that, uh, well, it's not really hard to evaluate it. Like good marketing, you can't tell it works, right? So then you have the geeks who are like, oh, these people are lying and they're saying this and they're talking and we're building all these products. But it's not really like that. It's really way more nuanced and, and they're so subtle. And if you think that's, again, that's what he says in the book. If you think marketing doesn't work or doesn't work out on you, you're probably the one who's getting most marketed then. Yeah. And he also says that if there's no marketeers around you, then you're the marketer. That's also a, <laughs> a very good quote. Yeah. So, you know. Well, well let yeah. me ask you. you know, I'm yeah. curious actually. Um, so you, how was your experience actually w w with running the mind node and all those things? Which one, which one did you try first of all? Which one of, of these ones did well, you try? Um, me and my girlfriend, we ordered, um, we had ordered a Casa 2. Uh, she still has it, you know, uh, on her, so, uh, not even unpackaged, but. How much I, was that, by the way? How much oh, is that? that? Was, it, uh, people don't talk about the price, you know, when they talk about this. No, no, no. Uh, the, the price, you know, was, was, I mean, for the hardware itself, uh, I talked to a lot of people, you know, about the price and I criticized him openly. I said, you know, could would make this a little bit cheaper for the average person, but it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, it's, it's a Casa 2 uh, with, a, with a Raspberry 4 and, uh, you know, all the equipment and, and the hardware, it's worth the money because it was like... Uh, approximately $300, uh, you know, with the, it's a golden package, you know, for one year, inc including the, the fee for one year. So, you know, it was okay. But, but the thing is I, I paid additional like 70 or 80 uh, euros uh, customs fees because, you know, so yeah, so it could have been a little bit cheaper, but you know, no, no problem. So I, I set it up. It took me at least half a week or a, a couple of days till I said it because I, I still had with the Casa to some issues, but then it, it got all resolved. But then, you know, I asked myself what I'm going to do with this. You know, I didn't really, I hadn't really thought about it. I was like, you know, I got to have a full node and, you know, be a full, fully sovereign Bitcoin citizen. So I set it all up, you know, on my app, the sats app, which by the way, they abolished it already. The, the you know, collecting sats for, for the, what do you call it? Like the lightning routing or whatever. So that, that is already deactivated uh, for one or two months now. And, uh, and then I, uh, also had a lightning channel, but I really didn't know what to do with it. So, and for my purposes, I thought, and then I read about, you know, my note, you know, what kind of features it has, and you can connect all your wallets to that. And can you talk a bit like when you, like what, if there would be differences between my note and Casa, like, or something that you like, like what are some really obvious ones that you personally was like, Oh, all right. Or like, mm. Oh, it starts already with the, because I bought the premium version, the premium software version of my note. Uh, for the automatic, you know, uh, updates and upgrades. And so that's worth the money. It's a one-time fee, you know, $90, whatever. So it's really worth the money. The first thing that really, uh, once I had it really up and running, you know, with the dash, with the dashboard and, and the, the, the full syncing and everything, uh, the, I really love the dashboard because um, you saw like one overview, you know, what kind of buttons and icons you have, all, all these, whatever from, Samurai wallet, you've got your own dojo, you, you know, you, you have your own Bitcoin uh, Explorer, 
Um, what else? I mean, you have you can have the BTC pay server. That's the only button in my case that is not deactivated because I don't have a you know I'm, I'm not a merchant. I don't have a business, and uh, but everything else is activated. And from then on, after a week, a one and a half week, you know, after I, I finally managed to do port forwarding because I had to call my router provider to deactivate the IPv6. I mean, I'm not not techy at all, but all these like little details, I'm like, God, if, if, if I'm having already so much troubles, you know, how is the average person out there going to do this? You know, forget it, you know. But, you know, that's why I'm saying we need some kind of support team, you know, that you can call, uh, you know, people would be, would be even willing to pay for that kind of service. This is what I just don't would. get, you know. 100%. And, and yeah. you, you, you know could what? do that, I'll, you know. I mean, I do. Here's the thing. If you buy, I had this cool thing called, you know, I really like Gibson guitars and they, they really are, um, they really are known for their craftsmanship. And if you buy a Gibson guitar, uh, the blue one is a Gibson guitar over there and the yellow one. If you buy them, they, they have warranty for life. And I really like how they have this whole feeling of like, you know what? We got you, dude. We got you. The guitar is nice. Don't, don't worry about it. Just anytime. And that's how it is. Like if you, if you bought Bitcoins for us, you can call me at any time. Literally, you can call us at exactly. any time and someone that's will answer. Exactly we'll solve your yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing what people don't understand people don't never call you with hard problems they call you with really easy problems that they don't know and they don't take that long to, to solve you know yeah did you i personally right now have a raspberry pi blitz over there i can't show it to you because the cables aren't long enough mm -hmm. that's and that one is um it's it's similar to my node but it's a it's way less user friendly and it's more diy oriented but that's also a pretty good option if you ask me but yeah yeah, it's an individual thing, I know. But no, really, I'm, I'm really kudos to, to my Node people. There are not so many people, I think, in their team. There may be one or two people, and they have a bunch of users in the Telegram groups, and they're really helpful. And But it just, you know, it takes a lot of time and patience, and you need to, you know, trial and error. You need to change things, settings, VPN, open VPN, on your, with on your Android. And now, you know, I, I think I've got it figured out now. You know, I'm, I'm pretty, I'd say I'm pretty, pretty experienced now. I know exactly how to do it via Tor, via Android, open VPN or not. I, I connected the Breeze wallet, the Samurai wallet. That was the easier part, by the way. Yeah, they did a good job with Samurai wallet. A really wallet. good, good job. Yeah. Yeah. It, took me like, it took me like exactly like 10 seconds to connect my Samurai wallet to my Dojo. So really shout out to them. And what else? Uh, I, uh, the Blockstream Green Wallet and you know uh, Adam Beck and his team or whatever whatever team is behind that Blockstream Green Wallet base, I think they have to get their shit together, to be honest with you, because some things didn't work. I, I, we tried to do this with another user from the, uh, from the MyNode group, and he's much more experienced than me, and he said, you know, they got to get the shit together because it didn't work, you know, the whatever SPV and connecting it and whatever. So... Um, but, but otherwise, you know, it's pretty, really easy to connect all your wallets, uh, whatever, you know, is connectable, even the, the hardware wallets, you know, such as um, Bitbox, um, uh, you know, that uh, you can just, it, it, took me, it took me a little bit longer than anticipated because uh, they had to clarify something with the port number, you know, which, which exact port. And so these are like specific details you've got to educate the user about, you know. And I think it's we're, we're we're getting there, but it's really you know slowly, gradually, and then suddenly, hopefully. You know? <laughs> yeah, let me let me let me drop some something that's gonna make people go like, <clears throat> all right. If you're on a node and you're not receiving payments, and you also don't have when people connect to it, uh, you're, you're not doing that much. You're not really enforcing the rules on the network. Just yeah. so you know. Yeah. And, and that was happening also a lot with Segway back then. I was like, well, I did that also, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't receiving any payments on that note, but I was like, I'm running a segue. No, no, doesn't matter, buddy. So there's also like, you know, if you're, if you buy Bitcoin and there are a lot of people like this, by the way, not everyone has to try to make more Bitcoin. I'm sympathetic. Maybe some people want to do a lottery ticket. Let it, let them be. I don't really think it makes sense to, I mean, it makes sense to verify your own things. Like how do you actually really know the Bitcoin is there, privacy, yada, yada. But now that guy just has a note right now. He's probably spent a month with his life and he, doesn't care about it so you know you have to be a bit more specific with these things and you know what i think we do as bitcoin we project a lot i have run yeah. we're human mm -hmm. right so now because we were so it's like I, because i learned guitar if i play blues guitar and you maybe want to play classical i'm just projecting like you have to have the same way i went through it and whatever maybe that's not going to be the case man some people are going to be okay with you know just just not running a note it's not the end of the world dude. yeah 
Another challenging thing, I mean, I, that's why I, I've never set it up, you know, lightning channel or open a channel. I, first of all, I don't need it, but for, just for the sake of education, I would want to learn it and like open a channel with someone. Besides now the risk I heard, you know, that it's not really like, you know, it's, it's still a maturing phase. So um, I don't need it, but it would be good, you know, to, 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 you know, step up with that too and, 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 uh, you know, educate people like, what are the risks? How do you, what's the best approach? How do you open the channel? These things, got, but you know, there are a bunch of people out there who make great videos such as, uh, what's this guys, uh, keep it simple. Kiss? We did a, is yeah, it, kiss. Is we it, did a, is it a kiss? Yeah. Yeah. We did an interview with him and Ben Kaufman or, uh, crypto kids, uh, one of the users of my notes and shout out to him too. And, you know, and then of course it's BTC pay, a BTC session with Ben and, and, and Ketan from Minister of Notes who works together with Stephen Levera. So if there were more people like that, because, you know, I don't see myself like doing videos uh, because it's just, it's just a little bit too technical for me right now. I mean, the things that I am already in control of and I really understand what I'm doing, I could do, probably do that. And, you know, maybe, maybe the two of us could do a, a video with other users, you know, like do a regular session where we really, you know, get together once a month or every two, two months and, and explain things that are, uh, let's say, you know, obviously logical, you know, and, 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 and repl repl replicable. Well, I'm totally up for that. And, and I, I, again, I like to do things like this, but you know what, you may probably not see it like that, but you are a sophisticated Bitcoin user, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, just because you have the knowledge of these tools existing, right? That's what makes you sophisticated. Now, the thing is there's 10 people like that on the planet and they're all on Twitter, all right? Or they're gonna end up on Twitter. So I think the education part only works for people like this and there's less and less people like this, you know? But most of the people, I don't think they wanna be educated because I, I don't know, I, I mean, even I don't really understand what's happening in my computer that well. Maybe I do to some degree, abstractly, but so, so, so I don't think there's going to be that many people, you know, there's going to be like the sophisticated user, the enthusiast, and that's the people, you know, who, who are the target group for this. And there's still a lot of them, but I said I know the 23, but there's a lot of them. I was just trying to be, you know, uh, obnoxious, I guess. But yeah, that would be cool. You know, it's, it's cool. It's cool, man, to get along with people, you know, and there's like, you know what I, what I really liked about Bitcoin that ever since day one, I've always been around people who are like gurus somehow. Like these guys were around me. They were really smart people. And I've always had guys who I could like literally call them up and they would like spend hours with me explaining to me what's happening here. And that's a really cool feeling, you know? It's like you spend a week on something and this guy was like, no, you, you're supposed to do this. What? Yeah, and it works, right? And it is cool to, to, to come around with people and geek out with them. I like that. I like to geek out about crazy things. But um, I, 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 that's not, I don't think that's for normal users, you know? It's for people mm. like us. And yeah. you know it's cool. Yeah, we we still have to go a long way. Uh, it uh, sometimes it, yeah it, it brings me back to reality. But okay, um, final thoughts. Um, really really uh, enjoyed our, our talk, man. Uh, any final thoughts, wishes, uh, dreams? Yeah, forecast? final thoughts. Final thoughts. Look, listen, hodlers of last resort. First of all, as you are progressing in life, okay, the um, the. the the, the value you get for spending money, you're getting diminished returns in that. Meaning, and forget inflation and everything, $10 when you're 20 years old, it's, not, it's, it's more valuable for you than $10 when you're 30 years old, right? So, I, dude, what's the point in being rich if your dick doesn't get up anymore, all right? So spend some of that money when it's good. Stop, stop being so stupid. You know, enjoy your life a little, little, little bit. That's why everyone's so mad on Twitter, dude, because they, they can't spend anything. They're just like, oh, I'm hoping I'm going to get rich one day. Dude, calm down. You're going to be rich one day. Spend a little, live a little. And if you want to buy Bitcoins in the UK, Bitcoin, um, ibex minus Bitcoin.com. That's us. That's me. Uh, you can buy Bitcoins from us. In a very short time, we're also going to be able to process uh, bank transfers. And uh, if you want to find me around, I'm raw underscore avocado on Twitter. I am. That's, oh, and by the way, there's this new Mambo server. We have a, a set up. It's Bitcoin Enemies, BitcoinEnemies.com. You can come there. You can chat all the time. Uh, it uses Mambo, which is like a open source team speak. And we can come there and chat about things and ask questions and mostly shoot the shit. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, I already checked it out. So your Twitter handle is raw avocado. Put that raw, raw underscore avocado. Yeah, raw. raw underscore avocado. All right, Alex. Thanks so much. And really enjoyed our conversation. Hope to, yeah, get you on, you know, maybe on a panel discussion next time. That would be awesome.
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I really appreciate it, man. And I'm sorry if I sounded a bit too aggressive because I'm not. I mean, you know, I, I may sound like it on Twitter, but I'm not. I really don't have no, I'm just sorry be yourself, if man. I came off like that. Yeah. Stay authentic. All right. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate it. All right, Alex. Have a good one. Cool. Bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers. All right. That was Alex. Trooper Alex. Um, he's really knowledgeable, uh, technically experienced, skilled Bitcoiner. I uh, really enjoyed my conversation with him. So listen, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, get some skin in the game, whatever you do, however you buy your Bitcoin. Uh, and I guess it's going to be either, you know, an ATM, you know, where you pay like three to three, three to four, three to uh, three. 0.5% uh, transaction fees or more on an exchange, you go in Kraken. Um, and that's why, you know, they're, they're so, you know, they're so pro- popular Kraken because they have the lowest transaction fees. That's, you know, this is, this is the feature. This is the advantage of, the, of, of Kraken. They're fully KYC, but you pay like whatever, 0.2, 0.3 transaction fees, but it's KYC, you know? So yeah, we all, you know, I guess most people do that and uh, we have no other choice unless we have more competition, lower transaction fees and smoother frictionless, uh, up, you know, opportunities to, to buy, purchase Bitcoin on a regular, regular basis or whatever. So thanks so much for listening, for support. Make sure you follow Alex, make sure you follow me. Subscribe, please, if you haven't on my podcast platform, YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Telegram groups, what have you. Thanks so much. My name is Kevin Devan, I'm the Total Connector, and I'll see you soon again. Bye.